right so let's carry on to commercial activities most aspects of life in tunisia have been monetized apart from the substance farming substance farmers can be recognized because they cultivate a variety of crops while a uh, market while a uh, market owned uh, oriented farmers concentrate on a few most tunisian farmers expect to sell their crops and buy their need and buy uh, to sell their crops and buy their needs the same applies to craftsmen and other occupations rural tunisia is covered by an interlocking network of weekly markets that produce basic consumption goods to the rural population and serve as collecting points for animals and other produce among uh, and other produce among the very poor in tunisia are self-employed street vendors market traders and others in the low levels of the informal sector let's check out the major industries the national government after independence continued to develop phosphate and other mines and to develop uh, processing factories near the mines all along the coast there are some there is some oil in the far south and in the center efforts to develop heavy machinery such as steel and shipbuilding are limited more recently light industry uh, has expanded in the clothing household goods food processing and diamond cutting sectors some of this is done in custom free zones for the export to europe uh, considerable small-scale manufacturing is done in artisanal workshops for the local market these workshops often with fewer than 10 workers include the owner or the upper level of the informal sector overall manufacturing counts for 23 percent of the labor force the service sector is also substantial in tunisia employment uh, employment in service is about 55 percent of the labor force a major service industry is tourism mostly along the coast and oriented toward europeans on beach holidays with excursions on historical sites contact with the tourists has been a major source of new ideas Banking and trade are also well developed, both internationally and in terms of a network of markets and traders in the country. Let's check out the trade. Export includes light industry products and agriculture products such as wheat, cypress, and olive oil. Imports include a variety of consumer goods and machinery for industry. Let's check out the division of labor. The National Division of Labor uh, reflects education and gender there are many relative relatively complex jobs whether for the government or not that require a specific education skills and background thus the education system provides a major input into the division of labor many tunisian men and some families now live and work abroad this began with migration to france in the early 20th century tunisians now also migrate to various european countries and to oil countries such as neighboring Libya or the more distant Persian Gulf nations. Remittances and other forms of investment at the homes are significant and, are re and returned migrants play a role in many communities. Since many men from the marginal agricultural areas have migrated in search of work, agricultural labor has been feminized. Uh, intellectual and professional Tunisians also migrate, but the path a more individual let's check out the social stratification classes and castes tunisian society is marked by class distinctions with considerable upward mob mobility and fuzzy class awareness class distinctions based on wealth are the most apparent and uh, with enormous with enormous differences between the wealthy bourgeoisie living in the fluent suburbs of tunisia and the rural and urban poor Wealth in one generation leads to improved education in the next. Status through ancestry is relatively unimportant. A symbols of social stratification are basically in style and level of consumption. Political life. The government. Tunisia is a republic headed by the president. There is a prime minister, a council of ministers, and elected national assembly. Local administration works through officials appointed by the Minister of Interior. 
urban areas organized in municipalities also have a town council. Let's check out the leadership and political officials. The political party that took the lead in the national movement, in the nationalist movement from 1934 to 1956 has essentially been a single party since independence in 1956. The party was initially known as the Neo Destor Party. Then in the 1960s was called the Destor Socialist Party. And since the deposition of the Abu Guiber in 1987 is named the Democratic Constitution Rally. The word that has remained in its name is Constitution, Destor in Arabic, which implies a concern with legality. This party has historically been relevant, well-structured, with active local branches organized in rational hierarchy. There is a rare structure for women. The, form, the formerly autonomous labor union movement has now essentially been co-opted. Successful political careers involve slow advance in the uh, party hierarchy. Some opposition parties are allowed to operate legally but have little influence. In 1999 elections, the government introduced a form of proportional representation to allow opposition parties to enter parliament despite relatively low voting scores. The 21 women in parliament represent 11.5% of the membership. Let's check out the social problems and control. Crime is low. The public order is generally quite peaceful in Tunisia, though there has been one or two outbreaks of rioting around economic around economic issues in different parts of the country the concern of the government to maintain order is reflected in the growth of police forces in recent years political dissidents of all kinds are given very little freedom to act even traffic police are severe military activity a tunisian's relatively small army has seen little action Let's check out the social welfare and change programs. Part of the contract between government and people is that government officials take the lead in promoting welfare and development. These programs are done either with foreign bi bilateral assistance or through government's own resources. These include programs in the areas of health, family planning, environment, agriculture, regional development, major infrastructure construction, such as dams and irrigation projects. Let's uh, look at the non-government organizations and other associations. Since independence, the government has worked to create a sense of individual citizenship with citizens dealing individually with the state. Thus, in practice, it restricts the activities of non-government organizations. The more political organizations, such as human rights, women's rights, and environmental organizations, are either co-opted or suppressed. The government and the party themselves offer a wide range of associations for women, youth and labor, and it is difficult to compete. After independence, the labor union organization entered into a long struggle to maintain its independence of government control, but eventually succumbed. Efforts to create water user associations in rural areas are limited by law restricting their right to collect and spend their own money. An important form of non-government organization is the sports clubs, essentially football clubs, which are usually dominated by figures from the national elite. Let's check out the gender roles and statuses. Division of labor by gender. In family and household settings, the men are responsible for producing an income, whether through self-employment, agriculture, or through a job. While women are responsible for managing the household, in agricultural households, this may include transforming the raw materials of agriculture into useful items such as spinning and weaving wool from family sheep, preparing the wheat into couscous or preserving fruit and vegetables. Women work in agriculture either in a family context, especially when men are absent or sometimes as wage labor on the large farms in northern Tunisia. Women who work for wages in agriculture are paid about half the rate for men. The rate is sometimes justified on the grounds that they do not produce as much, but this is also a strategy to maintain 
low overall wages. In a wider community, the division of labor is less strict and there are many women who occupy jobs in government, industry and the private sector. In the late 1990s, women were 36% of professional and technical workers and 13% of administrators and managers. The per capita share of GDP, however, was about half the national average. Let's see the relative status of men and women. Independent Tunisia under the Bob Weber made a major effort to improve women's status by encouraging education and employment, improving the conditions of marriage, and encouraging family plan planning. This was reduced rather than eliminated the gap between the status of women and men. Women still endure a lot of stress trying to follow a career to enter public life in a male-dominated society. Some men resent the formal employment of women when unemployment of educated men remains high and also scorn the idea of women in public life. Let's look at marriage, family, and kinship. Marriage. The choice of marriage partners may be by arrangement between families or a result of individuals selected based on acquaintances made at school or work. There is a, some preference for cousins in part because cousins are considered to be equal status. Girls are not supposed to marry beneath them. Mothers search for brides for their sons and many scrutinize possible candidates during the women's periods in the public but Once an engagement is settled, on, there is a complex series of visits between the two families. Sometimes disputes over gifts or ethic leads to a collapse of the engagement. Or one of the other one or the other of the partners may back out. The marriage ceremony itself involves the shift shift of the bride from her house to her groom's house. While the groom waits outside so that he may enter into the bridal chamber where she is waiting. After the consummation of the marriage, there is a period of seclusion until the young couple re-enters society. The legal aspects of marriage are covered by the Personal Status Code, introduced right after independence in 1956 by the Bogweber. The code generally had the effect of protecting women's rights and encourage, encouraging companionate marriage. The court prohibited polygamous marriage and forced marriage for girls and forced marriage for girls, established a minimum wage for marriage and required and required judicial divorce rather than repudiation. repudiation. Later amendments allowed women to initiate divorce. Let's check out the domestic unit. The household in Tunisia is based on the patrilineal family. Beliefs and practices sustain the notion of the dominant male head. Most households are based on the nuclear family, apart from the urban poor in the old city of Tunisia. Most, household, most households at all income levels consist of separate house together with its courtyard and annexes. Within the household, tasks are assigned to a basis of gender and age as well as personal skills. Changes in educational and employment patterns have made the com companionate marriage between equals more common. Let's check out the inheritance. Inheritance, allowing, following Islam in parable with male heirs receiving twice the share of equivalent female heirs. Bequests are allowed only to those who would not otherwise inherit. Certain kinds of property such as farmland may not actually be divided in use, though a record of the inheritance situation is maintained. Formally, property could be kept as a unit by making it endowed to the family, but this is now rare. Let's check out the kin groups. Tunisians recognize uh, the extension of kinship beyond the nuclear family and maintain the network of connections. Or elsewhere, these links are more alive among the wealthy and powerful where the stakes are higher and among very poor where they are major resource when where a family retains a connection with an ancestral saint the annual festival of this saint serves as a family reunion and sacralizes the group 
meaning those descended those descended in the male line from the ancestor in the parts of interior tunisia where pastoralism once dominated these connections extend to a tribe here called an Aosh, such as Las, such as Las around Al Karayawan, or the Fairfish or Ma Ma Macho around Al Quesrayan or Sibeleta. Please, <laughs> pardon my pronunciation. This is larger. This is a larger identity based on extension of kin ties. These units and their chiefs are, were recognized in the colonial systems, but were rejected by the independent government. The ties are now only occasionally activated, for instance, in elections and marriages. Let's look at socialization. Infants are carried by their mothers or older siblings in a family setting. Most newborns are breastfed. A child rearing and education, once children can walk, their fathers may play more of a role in their upbringing, especially for boys. At age six, the this, this state takes over socialization for both boys and girls through virtually universal primary school. The schools are well organized and managed through perhaps under equipped, though perhaps under equipped. Higher education. The path of children begin to diverge after primary. Some women are on an academic track while others undertake vocational education. Children labor is relatively uncommon but boys may begin to work as apprentices when they are teenagers. Those who remain at the academic track eventually pass a, a, a type of examination which governs their subsequent career. The academic elite continue on to university facilities in Tunisia or elsewhere. Let's look at the ethics. Tunisians are relatively egalitarian with their interpersonal relations, but there is a strong sense of ethic. People should be addressed respectfully. A man should not show too much curiosity towards the women in his friend's family and may not even know their names. In some cases, men do not visit each other's homes because the women would inevitably be present. Some people with a sense of their own status do not visit those they consider lower in rank. This includes these rules are relaxed in the urbanized upper classes. Modesty codes for women prevail in some areas. In traditional urban society, women are supposed to be uh, circumspect in their behavior. They were supposed to limit their trips outside the house of certain culturally approved destinations, such as public baths or tombs of their relatives in the cemetery. In certain sectors of Tunisian urban society, women cover their head and body in public with a rectangular white cloth or sfasari. Rural women follow different dress practices but may adopt urban forms of visits to the city. These older practices are rare now and the modern veil has been officially discouraged so there is no common dress code. Men are supposed to show respect to each other. A man is not supposed to smoke in front of his father and he's not supposed to carry his own child in the presence of his father. Brothers might frequent different cafes so that the presence of a brother would not inhibit relaxation. Traditional male dress include loose trousers and a shirt which perhaps with perhaps a robe over that and a red felt skull, skull cap. Again, practices are now less uniform than in the past with the differences reflecting degrees of modernity or level of education or income. Let's check out the religion. As Muslims, Tunisians accept the oneness of God and the power of his word as expressed in the Quran. For many purposes, people prefer to, people, people refer to the text of the Quran and of certain related texts such as hadith, authentic traditions. The Sharia or Islamic law in, in central, is central to people's understanding of what is proper. Together, these texts lay down correct behavior and lead to certain everyday rituals. In practice, there is a certain amount of variation in belief and practice. The variation corresponds broadly to the social position of families and individuals. The religious calendars provide the certain 
the main occasions of the expression of beliefs the five day prayers the weekly cycle organized around the friday mid prayer and the annually and the yearly festival uh, structure time uh, the annual cycle includes the fasting of the ramadan there is also a feast of sacrifice which coincides with the annual pilgrimage to the holy places of mecca and medina okay so let's look at uh, death and afterlife uh, muslims believe that the soul lives in lives on after physical death corpses are buried quickly the same day or early in the next morning in cemeteries reflecting social identity of the dead person the corpse is washed wrapped in shroud carried to the cemetery by a group of mourners and buried in a tomb the body is laid on on its left side facing mecca these are periodic commemorations of the dead after seven or 40 days and sometimes after year, survivors also make visits to the tomb men and women separately and leave offerings to the soul of the dead medicine tunisia has a modern system of health with the hospitals and clinics well, well distributed in the country in addition these there are private doctors and hospitals the university of tunis has a medical school some doctors in the capital have forced associations to promote public health awareness and notably around the question of preventing pollution traditional healers include bone setters dream interpreters herbalists and other specialists Tunisians also often seek mystical healing in religious contexts. Modern alternative medicines, including acupuncture, is also found in cities. Let's look at the secular celebrations. The national holidays are all evocations of the present, of the recent past of the country, uh, and celebrate the markers of the national, of the nationalistic history. They include independence from France, uh, that's March 20th, 1956. The proclamation of the public, uh, that's on the 25th of July, 1957. The adoption of the first constitution uh, of the Republic is on June 1st, uh, 19, 1959. The, the final evacuation of the French military from Tunisia, that's on the October the 13th, 1963. And the change of when President Ben Ali was sworn in uh, to replace Bon Guiber, uh, on November the 7th, 1987. These days are general are generally holidays from work. Let's see the art and amenities. Support for the arts. The government and some wealthy benefactors support the arts. The one way of doing so is through national or local festivals devoted to one form or another of music, poetry, folkware. These festivals include competitions with prizes for the winner. Let's check out the literature. Uh, Tunisia has produced some fine writers, more in Arabic than, than French. Graphic arts, paintings, mosaic, and murals by Tunisian artists are commonly seen. Uh, performing arts, music plays a major role in the everyday life in Tunisia, and many people are amateur musicians who perform in a circle of friends and neighbors. Professional performers appear in restaurants, nightclubs, as well as festivals. Tunisian drama is especially known for, known for experimental theater as well as for classical plays. Tunisian filmmakers established a collective reputation for solid films, many of which deal with, an, with a coming of age in the recent historic past. So, they are both psychological dramas and recreations of the national narrative. Status of physical and social sciences. The physical and social sciences are both concentrated in the University of Tunis, also affiliated with the University of Tunis in this, in the Center of uh, Studies for Researches and so for Social Researches. There are other scientific research institutions such as the Ocean Oce Oce Oceanographic Research Institute on the coast of Salombo near Tunis. Also attached to the University of Tunis is a center focusing on the national independence movement. Research quality is high and mainly Tunisian scholars in these areas publish in Tunisian and non-Tunisian journals, usually in French. Alright, so we've come to the end of this series as far as Tunisia goes. I want to thank you so much if you've made it this far. 
uh, please uh, stay tuned for our next country as we're rolling out all 54 of uh, the continent's beautiful countries so uh, please don't forget to join us on our next series and uh, please uh, if you've uh, not subscribed feel free to do so and we also be sharing uh, please remember to check out our um, uh, business site uh, we have an online a store that has some um, uh, merchandise that you can help us support to carry on with more content. Once again, this has been your story, Christine, with Exhibit Africa Inc. And today's um, series or today's fun and interesting facts were brought to you by everyculture.com if you want to check them out. Until our next uh, episode or our next series, ciao for now.